we give you glory today. For this is the day that you've made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we honor you for this opportunity to serve you. So be thou glorified. Be thou glorified in everything that is said and done. Give us clarity of thought. Give us an ear to hear you. Your word declares that he that hath an ear, let us hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. God, we want to hear you today and we love you. We are a loving people and we are an appreciative people for who you are and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Clap those hands and give God the glory. Hallelujah. While you're clapping those hands, open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, let your sound hit the earth. We love you, Lord. We love you so. We shall We love you. Can we clap our hands and honor the Lord for our leader on today? Can we bless the Lord for our apostle, Apostle Jerron C. Williams? Come on, clap your hands and bless the Lord for him. Out of the need of man, God created woman. And out of the need of new life, God created you. And God created new, you for this new life. And I may not get the opportunity to say this again, so I'll say it now. You have no idea what you are to me. You have no idea the gift that you are to me. And oftentimes I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, who really is this man? And the Lord said, if I told you for real, you wouldn't even believe me. Thank you for being the mystery that changes everything. I love you in a way you'll never understand. I'm humbled to be called a son. Can we clap our hands and honor the Lord for him one more time? I honor the Lord for my wife in her absence. She had to travel because of work, but I honor the Lord for her. Can you bless the Lord for my wife? I thank God for all of our pastors, Pastor Jameson, Lady Jameson. We honor the Lord for you. Happy anniversary to Pastor Terrell. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, sir. I'm sorry. Forgive me. To all of the prophets, all of God's people, the mothers, we greet you even down to the children. They're precious in the Lord's sight. Let's go to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord comes to us from the book of Mark. Now, I'm not going to lie to you because we are family. I'm a little nervous. I would, be a little, I would be a little bit dishonest if I say the word little. But we're standing in God's strength. We greet everybody that's online today. We bless you. The word of the Lord comes to us from Mark 14, starting at the first verse. If you have it, say amen. If you need time, say wait on me. Amen. God waited on us, so I don't mind waiting either. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord comes to us. In Mark 14, it says, after two, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And, there, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Verse 2 begins to read, but they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. Verse 3 begins to read, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very special, very precious. And she break the box, somebody say break the box, and poured it on his head. And there was, there was some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For this might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. Some of us be saying that and don't be giving God nothing. Amen. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Somebody say, let her alone. Why trouble ye her and have wrought a good, for she has wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me, somebody say, but me. Ye not, you have not always. Verse 8 begins to read, she have done what she could. She has come a far hand to anoint the body of my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be, shall be spoken of her memorial, of for a memorial of her. 
this is the word of God for the people of God. We say thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. If I could use a topic for today, my topic would be ah, cross the line. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, cross the line. Come on, look at somebody else and say, cross the line. Come on, look across the aisle and say, cross the line. You've been, you've been in a place. Cross the line. I want to speak for just one moment. The Bible begins to speak to us concerning uh, the journey of Jesus Christ. And during this particular time, Jesus had already been in the processes of fulfilling his assignment in the earth. He had already laid hands on the sick and sick were recovered and laid hands on demons and demons were cast out. He began to lay hands on the blind and they began to see. So he was in the processes in the doing of his ministry. Somebody say he was in the doing of his ministry. And at this particular time, you understand that in the process of doing ministry, you're going to experience those that love you and you're also going to experience those that do not care about the call of God that's on your life. They're just there as, as we always hear for the fish sandwich. They want to find out what they can get from you. Does it mean that they are supporters of you? So you have to become aware of those. The Bible says know those that labor among you and I'm just encouraged that in this hour that we got somebody that is laboring with us. Don't you give God praise for our leader? Hallelujah. So the Bible begins to say that he was in the processes of doing what God called him to do, doing what he was sent on this earth to do. Well, in the processes of doing so, there were people that did not really understand the grace and the call and the authority on his life because of his, his, because of his history. He didn't come from a rich background. He didn't come having all of this, but he had an understanding and he was assured of his calling. I want to ask you a question today. Are you assured of your call? I know that you come every Sunday and you come on Wednesday and you serve and wherever that you serve, but are you certain of what you're called to do? And I want to ask that question because I'm aware of the fact that there is an enemy that is coming to rob you of your awareness. And I don't want you to be deceived in this hour and think that you don't have the wherewithal to stand under the power that God has given you. Look at your neighbor and say, I got power. Hallelujah. Look at somebody again and say, I got power. Hallelujah. And so people don't always understand and can identify what's on your life. And sometimes they will almost try to ridicule you and ostracize you from the people that you are actually called to deliver and try to, to become, come on up in here I've been in places where people could not understand the call of God on my life and I understand, I, I, I was laughing with Prophet Paris a, a, a couple of weeks ago, a couple of days ago, I said I really hated that I became the person that I used to laugh about in church. I said, I used to laugh about them people that always come in. As soon as you come in, be like, I know this one. This is going to be the one that's going to be praising all the time. This is going to be the one that's speaking in tongues all the time. And if God is not God for real, I became the person that I laughed about. But I come to encourage you on tonight that I'm not even ashamed about it because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, and if I can just be real about the situation, if I can speak to the fact all that he could have done to me, oh, I don't mind quickening when I walk through this door. I don't mind giving God praise. I don't mind that when the music hit, I'm ready to dance. I don't mind none of that because I remember that there was a time where I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it through the door. I wasn't, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to go too far. Hallelujah. But I remember a time, the old folks say, I remember the day and I remember the hour when the Lord saved me. Well, there was a day that I wasn't saved. So I had to remember that there was a day that I did not do right. So I have to remember that I remember the moment where I should have been sleeping in my grave but look at your neighbor and say God's grace oh glory my shut up God's grace hallelujah to God and so because of that I, I'm grateful that I have this opportunity to be exactly who I am and so Christ was aware of who he was but there were people that did not understand and really could accept the call of God on his life but you know you have people that will follow you in the, in the process of your ministry and so everything seemed to be all right until it was one situation you know it's always good until it's not and so all of a sudden they're in the they're, he's in the middle of doing his work and there's a situation where he has to speak penance over somebody he tells them that your sins be forgiven you. Well, then that became an uproar in the atmosphere because they're trying to figure out what kind of authority are you walking in that you have the wherewithal to speak uh, uh, forgiveness over somebody or tell you that your sins have been forgiven. Well, I'm here to help you understand that Christ did not come to play around with the law, but the Bible says that he came to fulfill it. And I want to encourage you on today that the reason why people can take 
the anointing and the grace and the call that is upon your life is because they can't recognize the authority that you walk in. Look at your neighbor and say, I got authority. Or oh, come on, encourage somebody around you said, I got authority. I got, I'm not sick. I got power with God. That's the reason why I go under the warfare that I do is because of power. That's the reason why I'm talked about is because of power. That's the reason why the enemy don't want me to be in my position because of power. Somebody say, I got power. I have power with God. So because of that, there was a, a prepared onslaught to kill, look at your neighbor and say, my Jesus. my Jesus. To kill my Jesus. Because they wanted to stop the sound of deliverance in the earth. I want to encourage you that there's an enemy that is coming to try to suffocate, suffocate the sound of God that is in your belly. But I dare somebody say the devil is a liar. You have shanaya, You have pasha You have authority and power in God. And so the reason why that the enemy is coming to attack you is because of your authority. So he understood. He said, listen, I, I, I wish I could tell you that I have a long run in this situation that I'll be your apostle until on this earth until whenever he said but I gotta do this work now because I understand that the time is coming for me to transition so the Bible began to say that the Pharisees called him they wanted to have a conversation if you will wanted to politic with him to find out exactly who do you think that you are what do, what is this power that you're walking in so in the processes of doing that all of a sudden there comes a woman there comes a woman and I don't even, let, let me pause because I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to go too fast. So the Bible says that he comes, he comes in understanding his assignment, understanding his purpose. And he begins to walk out that assignment. I remember, it might have been about a couple of weeks ago, Apostle, and God began to speak to me. And he said, ascend from this place. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? He said, ascend from this place. I said, what is this place? He said, I need you to get out of your comfort zone. He said, I need you to get, he said, because the people that I've called you to deliver is not within comfort. It's not within reason. And so I said, but God, I don't know what else to do. I said, I'm trying to serve you. I'm trying to do what you call. He said, but you're trying to do it within the level of comfort. And he said, I'm calling you to a place that has no comfort. I'm calling you to a place that has no borders. I'm calling you into uncharted territory. Somebody say, I'm calling you. Oh, come on. I've called you with a holy calling. And I know that you're concerned and you're afraid of where you are. And you might be concerned and afraid of how God is going to use you in this next season. But look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid because the Lord is with you and so I said Lord okay I'm trying to ascend I'm trying to find where you want me to be he said I said Lord where do you want me to be he said ascend to my will I said, Lord, what are you saying? A sin to my will. He said, because oftentimes we feel that we are in the will of God because we're doing this. We feel that we're in the will of God because we're ushering. And we feel that we're in the will of God because we sit on the front. Uh oh, come on. We feel that we're in the will of God. And God said, that is not my will. God said, I have given you a grace path for you to walk in. And you cannot walk on the sidelines uh, waiting for somebody to see if you're called. Uh, you are the called of God. And we are in a season and in an hour where we can't wait to find out if you're going to accept the calling. Look at your neighbor and say, jump in now. Come on, look at somebody and say, jump in now. Because at this hour and at this place that God is calling us to, we can't wait and try to find out if I'm the person that God is going to use, if I'm the man, if he's the man. God said, I called you. Come on, Jeremiah. He said, I formed you in your mother's womb before you were even a thought. God said, you were already the prophet. You were already the called of God. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm the called of God. The Bible says that he began to walk through he got there and began to try to, you know, they wanted to find out exactly who was he. Who, who, who are you exactly? What do you represent? Well, before there was any conversation about that, because I just want to encourage you for just a moment that sometimes your, your presence need, to, need not be, uh, uh, excuse me, I'm so nervous. Your presence does not need to be defended. Your presence don't need to be defended. Do you understand me? Your presence does not need to be defended when your posture in God is a praise unto him. 
when your posture of intercession, glory to God, when your posture is a praise unto God, you don't have to defend the place that God has called you to because the place that God has called you to has already been designed specifically for you and nobody else and so when he began to come into this place he came into this house and it was all kind of people there I want you to be clear of the fact that he came into a realm where there were all kind of people there but he was assured of his assignment and I want to encourage you that no matter where you enter into and no matter where you go you need to be assured of your assignment I know that you might go around people that might smoke and drink and whatever that they might do still be sure of your assignment because there is, I just want to encourage you that there's an enemy that is trying to draw us out of God's will oh you're too quiet for me today on that subject there's an enemy that has come to draw us out of God's will and so you have to be assured everywhere you go in the marketplace on your job whether you go wedding no matter where you go and Jesus better go along with you the old folks say take the Lord along with you everywhere you go right so the Bible begins to say that in the midst of him uh, being in the midst of all of these people that came a woman and she had an alabaster box she understood where she was she understood the position that she was in and she understood that what she was getting ready to do was even greater than her I want to encourage you that there are some people that have a revelation of who you are and it is necessary that they use what they have in order to bring deliverance for their own self. And sometimes we're so consumed with, I don't want nobody to do nothing for me. I don't want nobody to do this. But I want to encourage you that there is a glory and an oil that is on your life to deliver people and you can't worry about how expensive it is. What they're pouring out is what you need. What they're pouring out is what you need. She understood that what she was giving out was greater than her. But she was in a place of preparation because she understood what was getting ready to come was greater than what was going on right now. So the Bible says that she took this alabaster box that was full of precious ointment. And the Bible says that she began to break it. I want to encourage you that in this hour, God is putting a command on you to break the box of intercession that's on the inside of you. Because what's on the inside of you is more precious than what you're trying to hold. And sometimes we try to hold on to stuff. And I remember growing up in a day, and I know all of us might, might know this pretty well. We grew up uh, having grandmothers. If you grew up and knew uh, what grandmothers did, we used to have a little display case full of all kind of glasses and all kind of plates and chinas and this. And so I'd be like, well, grandma, are we pulling out, are we pulling out the good china today? She said, no, this is to be preserved. This is to be preserved. And I said, but God, I said, but it, 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 food goes on this. Right. Dressing goes on this. Tater salad goes on this. Mac, Mac, look, the old folks said, mac and cheese goes on this. Why we ain't pulling out these plates? And so we get so consumed in what's inside that we don't realize that what really needs to happen, it needs to be broken so that it can spill out. And there's an anointing and an oil that's on the inside of you that is precious, but it needs to be broken. And God said, because in this hour, you're trying to reserve something that God said, I need you to spill out. And you're trying to be, look, I, I remember I tried, I tried, and I think you really, if, if I could be honest with you, sir, I think you might be the blame of why I cut up the way I do in church. Because I'm reminded when I first came, came to the church and I was at, we were in the chapel and you began to prophesy, you began to preach and you said, if you hear Elder Marcus start uh, 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 screaming out, just know that's his praise. I said, well, sir, I ain't never screamed out in this church. And this Sunday after that, <laughs> there is something on the inside of you that is much more precious than what you think it is. And so God is putting a command on you to break that box. Break that box of intercession. Break that box of consecration. Break that box. Somebody say break it. Break it because God understands that what is on the inside of you cannot stay in this place. It cannot. The glory, the praise that you have on the inside of you cannot stay in one spot. Somebody say break it. Break it. Break it. Understanding the fact that when you are in the process of breaking something, you got to understand that you're creating a disturbance in the atmosphere. You're going to upset 
a riot uh, inside a riot around people that don't understand why you're breaking up why you're they will not understand and cannot conceptualize the fact that you're in a place but I and you said it even David said I can be even more undignified than this I don't care because I'm reminded of where I came from I'm reminded of what God did for me I'm reminded of where he brought me from and so for that reason I can't worry about how much it costs the issue is is that we're not willing to pay the price for the glory that we ask God for Oh, I'm talking better than you saying amen up in here. Because the truth of the matter is we pray and we ask God, God, send your anointing, send your power, send your, your deliverance, all of these things that we ask God for. And God said, but you're not willing to pay the price. You keep talking about, I don't want to get up early in the morning. I don't want to pray. Baby, let me help you understand something. If you don't understand in this hour that it's important to pray, then I really don't understand that why you're calling yourself a Christian. Because in this hour, prayer is essential for where we going because oh come on up in here you haven't uh, uh, observed the atmosphere around you you don't see what's going on around you you don't realize the enemy that we're facing you don't see the spirit of compromise uh, that has hit the land uh, God said it is important and imperative that you pray because I understand that the power of intercession is not just changing what's going on in me, but it's changing what's going on around us. It is changing our region. That's why God brought you into where he brought you to. That's the, I'm a hustle. That's the reason why he brought you where he brought you. Because it was necessary to change your atmosphere. But it has to start with what? She was aware of the fact that she was, she, she might have not been, I, I, I can only imagine how she looked or how she presented herself. But all I could only imagine is that she moved pride to the side so that God could be glorified. The question is, have we gotten into a place where we can move our pride aside? Because the truth of the matter is, this is what really blessed me. You want to know what really blessed me? What really blessed me out of that is that Christ understood that even he had to do, move to the side. In the shoo satire, in the middle of knowing exactly what his assignment was, he said, yes, I am the greatest one that have ever walked this land. I am the greatest. He said, but even in me being great, he said, there is greater to come. How do I know this? Because he said, greater work shall ye do. It wasn't, come on. He said, I understand that you're so used to walking with me, that you're so used to being spoiled because I'm walking beside you. He said, but I'm great. He said, yes, I'm great beside you. He said, but I'm going to be even greater inside of you. Oh, come on, look at your neighbor and say, I serve a greater God because he dwells on the inside. And he said, as great as I am, he said, even I got to move out of the way so that greatness can ascend. Can you handle the fact that you might be great, but greater is still coming? Oh, come on. Because sometimes we, we, we dwell in the moment of what God has done, and we're not focusing on the doings of God. Come on. We live in the moment of our past experiences, and God said, I've already done that. He said, now I need you to walk in the doings of God. Somebody say, thank God for the doing of God. Oh, come on, shut Thank God for the doing of God. I'm appreciative, Pastor, about what he says because God is a powerful speaker. Come on, hallelujah. But I'm even grateful for what he does and the doings of God. And so in the process of that, I understood that the only way that I was going to be able to walk out my greatness assignment is that I removed the great, the, the thing that I thought was great out of the way. Yesterday is gone. Huh? Yesterday is gone. You won't get yesterday back. Oh, I preached a good message on yesterday. Demons were cast out on yesterday. That was yesterday. It's gone. All you have is right now. Somebody say fulfill today's assignment. Oh, come on, I'm a host here. Come on, I'm a host. Fulfill, man, I'm a host. Fulfill today's assignment. Come on, because Christ understood that for the joy that was set before, he said, I got to endure this. I got to go through this. And I, I, I remember old mother used to say to us long time, said, you can't take nothing. 
We don't have the wherewithal to take anything because we have become so emotional in our process of serving. Oh, I understand because I've been there before. Lord, I don't want to do this. I don't want to go here. I don't want to go to the God said you can't take nothing because you're so consumed about how you feel. And my old patent, my, listen, the old saints used to say, put your feelings in your back pocket and sit on them. Because when you've been called to do the work of the Lord, you come on up in here. When you've been called to do the work of the Lord, you can't focus on your feelings. Well, I feel in my heart, some in my heart, babe. You can't trust that heart either. Come on. You can't trust it. I know you feel that you can trust it. I know you feel like I just feel so dead. And my mother used to always tell me, she said, baby, you can be real sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. I don't care how much you feel in your heart, but if God has not given you the charge to go ahead, I want you to stay in one spot. Somebody say, stand still. Can you handle the fact that as great as you are, that you have to remove yesterday's greatness out of the way to fulfill today's assignment? Somebody say, I got a job to do today. Jesus was aware of his assignment and because of that, he fulfilled it. He fulfilled it until it ticked people off. I want to encourage you to do the work of God until it makes everybody around you mad. Did you hear what I said? Do what God has called you to do so much so until they get upset. Why he always shouting? Why she always speaking, speaking and talking? Why she always doing? Because this is what I was called to do. I told somebody, I said, I think the day that God has killed me right on the spot is the day I come into God's house and decide not to praise him. I think that might be the thing that, you know how people got this, like, this is going to be the thing that breaks the camel's back. I think that might be the thing that breaks the camel's back on me. Because when I think about all the stuff I've done, I appreciate this right side being truthful because this, this left side is real quiet. You said we at church. You said we family, right? Hey, family, y'all too quiet for me. If you're going to sit up, speak up. Come on. God. I, cause you, just because you got a pair of stockings on and a girdle don't mean that you don't remember where you came from. Because I, come on, because the Lord remember what you did last night and last summer. But before the grace of God, Thank God for grace. And so because of that, I, I, there's certain things I just can't play around with. Come on, because this mind already too bad. So I got to, when I come in God's house, I don't have no other choice. I don't have no other mindset but to give God praise. I asked one of the leaders, I asked him, I asked one of the leaders last week, I said, I was looking for so-and-so, I said, I didn't see him. I said, he's singing, he's singing in, the, in the choir, I, said, I didn't see him, I said, I was praying for him. They said, he was right there next to you. I said, I'll show you how much you know, I said, I'll be here for God, I don't see nobody else. We done got too consumed in seeing everybody else's assignment and not focusing on our own. And then we become frustrated in the place that we're in. And God said, you're frustrating yourself. Because you're not fulfilling what I've given you to do. And the Bible says I must work. I feel Holy Ghost coming on in now. I'm all right. I saw my shot. He said I must walk. I must walk while it's day. Because when night comes, no man can work. And I promise you as long as God put breath in my body. And as long as God keeps feet. I'm going to always give him a praise. I'm going to always bless him. Because he's worthy of that place. Can you handle the fact that your greatness has still has needs to be sustained for your next? It has to be sustained. Sometimes we are working in ministry, but we're not sustaining the grace. Preaching, singing, but we don't have the wherewithal to sustain the grace. So we're burnt out on our assignments and we're frustrated because we are not settled in the grace of our calling. Somebody say, settle yourself. Come on, settle yourself. Okay. She said, I want to, I'm going to break this box. And sometimes there's an issue with breaking a box because 
We're afraid of what's going to spill out. We're afraid that we no longer have control over the spillage. But I'm concerned, I, I, I'm convinced that no matter what comes out, God is going to sustain the oil. You didn't, see, you, you didn't hear it. No matter what comes out and however it is broken, because sometimes we have a way that we want to do things. The Bible says there's a form of godliness. I want to do it this way. God, because I know if I do it this way, it's going to please. There's a form of godliness. There's a form. Christ, but Christ doesn't have a form. He's not a 42 in the ways. He doesn't have a shape. But what he has is structure. And he builds structure in us. We have lost the Sanamaka. We have lost the structure of God. Because we want to do it our way. But then the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto man. Oh, we home here, but the end thereof. Oh, I just want to be in the way. I heard the old song says, keep me in the high, on the highway, Lord. I don't want to stumble. A lot of people stumbling, but I don't want to fall. He said, she said, I'm coming with this, what I have. It's precious. This is all I got. But I understand that if I don't break what I have, what is to come will not be sustained. So, Father, if I have to break what I got and pour it all out on you, whatever that I have, I hear the song in my spirit says, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I have. Everything I have. And everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now. See if I can be completely yours. I don't have much, God, but what you've given me, I'll break it for you. God wants to know, can, you, can your heart be broken in his presence? Can you break whatever it is that is trying to hold you against God's will? Can you break whatever that it is? God is trying to restore the trust of his people. Because we're afraid, Lord, if I pour this out, can you handle and accept all what I have? God said, you have no idea that I can handle all of what you are. I sometimes I look at you, sir, and I wonder to myself. And I said, Lord, I asked myself this question. I said, Lord, this, I said, why does he entrust me? Or believe in me the way that he believes in me. He said, he don't believe in you. <laughs> he does not believe in you. <laughs> you think you would be sitting up here, standing up here, doing anything if he believed in you? I love how God deals with me because he's real with me. He did this. He said, you too caught up on yourself. He don't trust. <laughs> he trusts the God. And sometimes we are afraid to trust the God that is in us. That we can release and pour out everything that it is. Whatever insecurities, whatever worries, whatever fear. We are afraid. But God said, in my presence, you can be the most vulnerable. And know that you will be kept and sustained in your vulnerability. And covered in your vulnerability. One of the hardest things there is to do is to, is to learn to be vulnerable. And for me, that was a very difficult thing. Because I wanted to find out, is there going to really be someone to catch me if I fell? It's a rough place to be where you're not sure anymore if people are going to be able to catch you in God's house. You would think that that would be a situation outside. Look at your neighbor and say, we still got work to do inside. 
there's a breach in there. We got, we got work to do. So the Bible says that she began to pour. And there was people haters that had something to say. Always have something to say. Always have something to say about the way I serve. Aren't you tired of people speaking about how you serve? Aren't you tired of people always having something to say about how you do God's will? I can't apologize for the place that I'm in in God. But where I am, I'm committed to the yes, Lord. Somebody say, I'm committed to the yes, Lord. The Bible begins to say she poured out and she began to give out all that she had. And in the processes of doing so, that were mumbling and words being said. And said, you could have sold this for 300 pence. Could have. Could have given it to the poor. Could have. But she understood that this was for my burial. Sometimes you have to be all right with the fact that what you're getting ready to pour out is going to be for the death of you. You have You have to be all right with the fact that what's getting ready to be poured out of you is actually going to be a part of what's going to be, what you're going to have to bury. You're like, Lord, why am I pouring this out? Because God said, this is the thing that I need you to kill. Why are you, Lord, why are you prepping me? God said, because I'm preparing you for death. Because you're too alive in your feelings. You're too alive in your emotions. You're too alive in your thoughts. You're too alive in what you feel. And I, I Lord Jesus, I, because see, I'm, I'm very real with the Lord. I said, Lord, I don't want to be so consumed in me. And I had to repent. I said, because Lord, I kept making this statement and then the Lord convicted me. I said, I'm an individual. I said, and sometimes I can be a real strong individual. And God said, you got to stop saying that. You ain't your own person. And I was just, because I really, I, I got, I got, I felt good about saying, I said, I'm my own individual. I move. And God said, no, you ain't your own individual. He said, because in you, in me, you live. And come on, the Bible says in him, we live, move and have our been and have and it say nothing about that. We were moving in our own strip. It said in him. And so I had to repent because I said, Lord, I said, what exactly are you? He said, I'm trying to prepare you to die. He said, because it's too much life in you. And it ain't new life. See, God can't deliver us if you cannot identify with where you are in the moment. God can't save a lie. I said that God does not save a lie, but he's an active participant in the truth. Come on. He's an, he will work with you, but if you be real with God, old folks say he'll be real with you. So I had to be real in that place and pour out. And I said, Lord, why are you in, what, what, what is this pouring out? He said, because it's time to die. He said, all of this breaking and grooming and putting this all in a no. He said, because it's time for a death. I said, but Lord, what's going to come from out of that? He said, new life. I'm a, God. Sir, God has given us a charge and we have been in a place where we have been blurring the lines. And the reason why the lines have been blurred, I'm speaking on behalf of my church. The reason why we have been blurred is because we've been afraid to cross that line. I come to let you know that we're crossing the line today. Because if we don't cross the line, then we will not unlock your hands to walk us to the next place that we're in. Because you can keep summoning us to come to a place, but until until we cross that line, it's always your hand reaching back. But I repent today. And I stand on behalf of my church and I repent today to tell you that we will not blur the lines anymore. But today we come to cross the line.
because we understand that whatever that it takes to get to the place called ascension we're going to cross the line whatever it takes that it no 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 my cassata whatever that it takes for us to get to a place called glory we're going to cross the line if we have to be undignified whatever that we have been called to do we're willing to cross the line because it's time somebody say it's time I'm reminded of the woman with the issue of blood. She could not worry about the fact that she was unclean. She couldn't worry about the fact that she was around people and it could have been whatever that it was. She couldn't worry about that. Bible says she had to press beyond her thinking, press beyond uh, the perception, press beyond. Somebody say press beyond. She had to press beyond that place. Because she knows she knew that the only way that deliverance would come is if she. And we've been playing it too safe. God said the waters were not trouble for you to stay in the boat. The waters were trouble for you to get out of it. God said, I didn't shake the boat to make sure that you stay in it. He said, I shook it because you were too comfortable in a place. And some of us have been comfortable in just being this. Oh, I'm just, I'm okay with being this because I was okay with just being this. I found peace here. I found joy here. I found turmoil here. Cross the line. Yes, sir. God is calling us to a place where there are no boundaries and there are no borders in our yes Lord stand to your feet there is a place when your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord Lord, yes, if your spirit speaks to me, oh, with my whole heart, I, I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Come on, lift that sound in here. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on, lift it up to the Lord. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yes. Yes, Lord. Come on, Amansa. Come on. Some of us need to repent from being in that comfortable place. Oh yes, Lord. I surrender to whatever you're saying over my life. Yeah, Lord. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. There are elders, there are men of God that are coming to pray with you if you want prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I tell them the whole coach Yes, Lord. To your will and a heart so. Come on, if you're coming for prayer, there are men and women of God that are here to assist you. But we say, yes, Lord, we'll cross the line. Whatever that you want from us, whatever that's satire, we say, yes, Lord, do it in our soul, do it in our belly. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Whatever you want the most, uh, whatever you're saying, I'm a whole coach. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, I tell you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We'll cross that line. We'll go where you tell us. We'll move where you tell us. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. To the place, to the posture. Yes, Lord. For conditioning us for the place called your will. Yes, Lord. We'll surrender and we'll submit to the plan of God. Yes. Yes, Yes, 
Lord. I don't want people to get in prayer. Come on, clap those hands. And tell them yes. There's a place he's entering you into. There's a place he's calling you into. And God said you're going to have to break the box. Break the box of prayer. Break the box of intercession. Break the box of consecration. Break the tire. Break that box. Go into the altar call. Go on. Take us into a place of the yes, Lord. Take us into a place of surrenderance where there's no fear or no doubt of your will over my life. Give us God our charge. Give us God our charge. Our charge to keep we have and our God to glorify. We promise you. Katana na ha, katana na maho. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, ho ho. Come on, na ha, katana na maho. Ketani ani li 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 li